until the recording is started. So good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is John Shoemaker. I'm from the Department of Educational Technology. And today we're here to continue our conversation from yesterday on getting started with Google Classroom session two. If you missed yesterday's session, as I indicated in the chat box, uh, the recording is already on our website, but we will also be doing more of those live webinars and all that will be on our website that we'll talk about more later. Before we get started, I wanna introduce uh, the rest of the people who are in the host box, um, the D Department of Educational Technology training team, if they wanna go through and introduce themselves. Good morning, my name is John Long, and I'm a specialist with the Department of Educational Technology. Good morning, my name is Tasha burke Peart. I'm also a specialist with the Department of Educational Technology, and I'm a Google Certified Trainer. Good morning, I'm Dr. Eric Jorgensen. I'm also a specialist with the Department of Educational Technology, and I'm also a Google Certified Trainer. Good morning and welcome. My name is Dana Rubenstein, also a specialist with the Department of Educational Technology. And we also have quite a bit of our ed tech folk in the participant boxes too, that they will be helping with questions as we go along. So thank you all for joining us too. Again, my name is John Shoemaker, a specialist in ed tech. And so what we're gonna do is review the agenda for today. Today we're going to go over a quick review of just talking about what we talked about yesterday so you will know what is on the recordings that we have. We're going to review how you can create assessments in the classroom and then also how you can review grading using rubrics and other ways to grade in Google Classroom. So yesterday and on the recorded webinar, We talked about quite a bit, which was creating a class in a Google Classroom, adding other people to the class, such as co-teachers, students, and parents and guardians. We shared how to copy classes. We shared how to create topics and organize your classroom easily, how you can add course material, and creating an assignment and questions for discussion. So as I said, yesterday was kind of the introduction and getting your classroom set up and adding some basic material. This session focuses mainly on grading and the assessment side of things. So with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Eric Jorgensen, who is going to go live for us and review the content for today. Good morning, and thank you for that, John. Give me one second while I get everything transferred over. All right, so today we are going to be going over how to create an assignment, um, both quick formative data assignments as well as quizzes, how to grade those, and then return the work back to the students. So from your Google Classroom, and just a reminder, you can get there through either the tile in the district portal or by going to classroom.google.com. You can see that up here in the web bar. It's classroom.google.com. So you're going to choose the class in which you want to create the assignment. So we have our EdTech classroom that we created yesterday. So I'm going to click into the classroom. And then in Classwork at the top, you can see it highlighted there. I'm going to click Classwork. I actually want to scroll to the very top of the screen. And where it says Create, I'm going to click on the button that says Create. And first, we're just going to do a quick assessment assignment. So for that, we'll create a question. You see, when I create the question, it's going to ask me what the question is. So let's just say, So what company was the music from in our pre-training? So right now it is set to a short answer. So when you post this, students would be able to put in a short answer. They would actually have to type in the answer. On the far right side, you can choose which class you want it for. 
it's going to automatically default to the class in which you created it, which also allows you to assign it to only specific students if you want to. It will automatically always default to all students, but you can turn that off and you can assign it to specific students if you wanted to do it that way. Most of the time you're going to do it for all students. If you want to do it for more than one class, you would click on four, and you can see you're able to choose multiple classes if you want to post the same question into multiple classes. Now do notice that when I do that, this becomes where it's non-clickable. If you post to multiple classes, it will automatically go to all students. So I'm just going to post in the EdTech classroom. I'm still going to keep it for all students here. You have the choice. You can give it a point assignment. You can also say that it's ungraded. You might just want to make it a daily check-in. You can have it be a daily check-in question and then have it be ungraded. Therefore, you won't have to go back and grade it. But for this, we'll have it be 100 points. Here you can assign a due date. So you can have it be even the same day that you're assigning it. So let's say that it was for today, the 20th. If you notice, it says time optional. If you leave no time, it will automatically be due at the end of the day, 11.59 and 59 seconds. You can also have it be due by a certain time. Let's say that you're a high school teacher and your day normally ends at 2.45 p.m. You can put that the assignment is due today by 2.45 p.m. Under Topics, you can choose which of the topics that you want this to go to. So we already have some topics that we had pre-created, Media Literacy, PLCs, Rock Cycle, Virtual Staff Meetings. If it's not one of those, you can either have no topic or you can do Create Topic. So in here, let's have it be daily question. It's a way that you can make sure that everybody's checking in. You, it automatically defaults to students being able to reply to each other so they would see the answer and they can reply. You can choose whether you want to have that on or off. It automatically defaults to on. It automatically defaults to off for students being able to edit their answer. I don't think that I want students to be able to comment on other students' answers for this question, so I can toggle that to off. Up here, you see instructions optional. If you want any specific instructions, let's say that you wanted to add an image for them to be able to answer the question. So you could say, please view the image and answer the question based on what you see. You can click Add, and you can add files from your Google Drive, whether it's an image, a Google Doc, any other document that you have in your Google Drive. You can add a link. So if you want them to be able to answer a question going on to a website, you can refer them to a website. Let's say you have them go to a, web, a website, uh, Newzella, for example, and read a passage out of uh, the Newzella article that you've assigned to them. You send them that link, and then they can come back and answer the question. You can upload a file from your computer, or you can have them watch a YouTube video and then answer questions in here. When you are all done, you want to go up here and you would click where it says Ask. You can also set this to where you schedule the assignment. So if you click Schedule and you didn't want this to go until students are coming back, let's say, the 31st, so you can have it automatically post on March 31st at 8 AM. So you can have it where it automatically will post the assignment at a specific time. So you can set up multiple days or weeks, months, etc., worth of assignments, whether it's these questions, we'll get into quizzes, other assignments, and you can have them post automatically at certain times. That becomes very useful when you're trying to do plans and you have things planned out for an extensive period of time. Instead of clicking Ask right now and creating this new assignment, I'm also going to show you the other option that we have in here. From Short Answer, you can change it to Multiple Choice. So in these quick formative questions, you can have it be a multiple choice question as well. So going with our question, what company was the music from? You can have Universal as an option. You click on the next one. You have Disney. Click on the next one. Fox Studios, which is owned by Disney. That would be a trick question. So forth and so on. So you can add multiple, you can add multiple options in there. So then we'll go and ask this question. So it's saving it. So now you can see under the assignments, daily question, what company was the music from our 
free training on. And in the stream, it shows that I've now posted a new question. So if you are actually in this class, those of you on the EdTech team that are in this class, if you can go in and answer this question, because that would give me the opportunity to go back and show people how to do the grading portion of that. While they're doing that, I'm going to show you how to create a quiz. So we've done how to do short formative assessments, both with short answer and multiple choice. Now I'm going to show you how you can create a long form quiz. So again, you're going to go to classwork, which is at the top towards the middle. You can see my highlighted mouse right over there. You're going to go to create and click on create. And you're going to go down to quiz assignment. Click on quiz assignment. And you're going to want to give it a title. So let's just say Disney trivia. You're noticing a theme for today, I think. Any instructions that you want to give, you can do that. We discussed everything over here on the, the right-hand side so far, except for rubric and originality reports. So rubric, you can create a rubric. Once you have a rubric created, you can reuse a rubric. Or you can create a rubric in Sheets, and you would import that from Sheets. We'll go more in depth into creating rubrics later. There's also this originality reports. What the, original, what the originality reports does, it's very similar to Turnitin. If you're not familiar with Turnitin, any answer that the student gives, it is a written response. So a long form response, it will actually process it. And it'll look for um, basically the honesty of the students. It will compare it to other documents that it has. Since this is from Google, they have access to a bunch of documents. And it'll make sure that it is the student's original work and not necessarily copied or pasted. And you, the students are actually able to run originality reports on their own so they can see, make sure that they are citing their sources as they need to and not just taking the information incorrectly. So here you can see where it says blank quiz. And this locked mode for Chromebooks. This is going to be especially useful once we get back into our classrooms. And if you're using the Chromebooks, you can actually turn that on. And what that does, you can see if I hold over here on the information, the students will not be able to open tabs or other applications while taking that quiz. Right now, this is only available if the student is taking the quiz on a Chromebook. Because our students are going to be using a multitude of devices, we're just going to leave that turned off, which is what it defaults to. You see where it says blank quiz, anywhere in this long bar, I'm able to click. And it will open up a Google Form. The Google Form is automatically going to be called Blank Quiz. Let's rename it. And we can rename it Disney Trivia. Or you can rename it War of 1812, whatever you're going to be working with the students on. Up here, it is still saved as Blank Quiz. So you want to click on that box and rename it. Disney Trivia, let's say you have it. March 20th. It's not wanting to get that second I that I type in there. So form description, if you want to give a description of what you're going to be talking about, you can do that in here, but it is not mandatory. And then you can start with the questions. So it says untitled question. And this is where you're going to type what your question is. So. who founded the Disney company. Now, did you see how it automatically changed? Briefly, it changed. And it went to a short answer. This is where you could have the students type the short answer. But if you click on this box, you can actually see it gives you a variety of options of ways that you can assess the students. You can have them do a short answer. You can have them long form paragraph, multiple choice, check boxes. You're going to, the difference between multiple choice and checkboxes, checkboxes are going to be if, if you have more than one option that will be correct. So you could have, in this example, who founded the Disney company, you can have Walt Disney, Roy Disney, and Steven Spielberg, and you would want them to choose Walt and Roy Disney. Drop down, you can give them options to choose from in a drop down menu. You can upload a file, meaning that you want them to upload a picture of someone or a file. They can upload their uh, research paper if that's what they've done. You can have a linear scale. So if the question was on a scale of 1 to 10, please say 
know, how you're feeling today, going back to a daily check-in, and they can actually choose that on the linear scale. A multiple choice grid, checkbox grid, a date if you want them to enter a specific date, and a time if you want them to be, in, be able to enter a specific time. So who founded the Walt Disney Company? We'll keep that as a short answer. Here's where it says answer key. When you click answer key, it's going to tell you, it's going to ask you how many points is this question worth. You can assign a point value to there. Add a correct answer. So correct answer, you could write Walt Disney. Mark all other answers correct. With short answer and long response, this gets really tricky because if you choose mark all other answers incorrect and you have Walt Disney with capital W, capital D as it's supposed to be, and the student types in Walt Disney with a lowercase w and a lowercase d, then, you, then it would automatically mark it incorrect. It's a little overly sensitive. Now, you are able to go back and override what Google does when it's automatically grading. So that is where you come in as a teacher. We, you know, we are not automated systems. We, we have our brains that we can think with. So you can go in and look at the answers and say, no, I know what they were trying to say. They typed it wrong. You know, they forgot to capitalize. And you can go back and override what, what Google put. Then you click Done. And let's just say it was a multiple choice. So you could have Walt Disney. Or Mickey Mouse. Then when you go to that answer key, you choose which one is the correct answer, and then click Done. And you can see on your screen now, it shows this checkbox. It will not show that for the students. For some of the primary students, you might want to give them an option of choosing from a picture. So in here, you can upload an image. You can use your your camera, if you, if you want to do that. Hi, everyone. You can give the URL of the image. You can upload it from your photos, from your Google Drive, or you can do an image search, which is a nice feature. So it automatically reaches out to Google. Because this is a Google product. So you can choose that image of Walt Disney click insert, and then that actually becomes one of the options. So for your primary students who might not be you know, proficient readers yet, you can give them the option to be able to choose from images that they'd be familiar with. You can also do that in your question. Now down here, going across the very bottom, you can see duplicate, so you can actually make a copy of the question. If you want to reuse the same format and just change the actual questions, you won't have to reinvent the wheel. You can delete the question altogether. But Really important is this required part. This will make them answer the question. They will not be able to submit the form unless this question is answered. So you definitely want to turn this on. If you don't turn it on, you might not be able, they will not be forced to answer the question and you might receive a lot of blank answers. Here you can go to description, show section based on answer or shuffle option order. So if you want to shuffle option order, let's say you're doing multiple versions of this, you can click on that. And each time it comes up for the student, the options are going to be in a different order. So that is how to create a, qu a question for your quiz in Google Forms. To add another question, click the little plus sign, and you add a question. And you go through until you have all the questions that you want. So. Because we created this straight out of classroom, I could close this down right now, and it would, it would automatically be in the assignment I created. But what if I wanted to actually send this out to students, or I have a quiz or a test that I've already created in Google Forms, and I want to put it in the assignment? That's where you can click on Send, and it gives you the option to send it via email, by, by a link, or embed. We're not going to deal with embed. The link, you can see this is a very long address. So we highly recommend shorten URL. You click on shorten URL, you can see that very long address becomes a very short URL for you to be able to copy. 
you actually can click the copy button and it's automatically copied into into your notebook. So as I said, because I created this in Google Classroom, if I were to close down this window, this is actually still, even though it says blank quiz, it is the proper quiz. So if I went and assigned this, I click assign, you see it's saved. It's up here in the assignments. And in the stream, you can see that I posted a new assignment, Disney Trivia. If the student were to click on this, their screen would look a little bit different, but they click on Disney Trivia, and this is how it would look for the students. So you can see who founded the Disney company, and I did not put an image for the second one, but it gives them the image so they would know that it would be that one. Now going into grading, because I've, because I've given the assignment, let's actually go back to the classroom itself classwork, and remember that question that I asked, the daily question before I created the quiz, I wanted some of the people that were already in the class to take it. You can see there were six people in the class. So there's four people that it's assigned to, two people have turned it in. So out of the six, four of them are still waiting for it, two of them are still in. I can click on those two. And I can see John Long chose Disney. John Shoemaker chose Disney. So I can go in and give them 100s. When I do that, you see that it automatically checks their names. See how right now there's a grade for John Long, so his name is checked. There's not one for John Shoemaker, so his name is not checked. But as soon as I put in a grade for John Shoemaker, it goes to checked. What that is for is this button up here that says return. So they've turned in the assignment. So if you look at Google Classroom, if it were a physical environment, they turned in their quiz. So now I have the quiz. As the teacher, I have the paper with the quiz on it. In order for them to get their grades, I need to return the assignment. So I return the assignment, it says return the work to the students. Yes, you can leave comments. Um, now if you leave, if you're returning to multiple students and you put a private comment here, the comment will go to all of those students. So you may want to, you may want to send your assignments back in tiers. So all the students that got a 90 or above, you can check their names and send it back to them with a, with a comment, great job. But if they received a 70 or below, you could send it back with revise and return by whatever date you, you decide. So when you return it, it now goes back to the students. So now it is like giving that paper back to the students. So if this were an assignment where there was a Google Doc attached, again, thinking of our digital environment in a physical concept, if they turned in a Google Doc, let's say a book report, they turn that in. They can't make any changes because you as the teacher own that assignment. However, when you return it back to them, they are able to make changes to it. That's where you can return it and have them make revisions and then turn it back in if you wanted to. So once they turn it into you, they can't make any changes. Even though it's their document, they've given it to you the same as if they handed in a piece of paper. When you have that piece of paper, they can't touch it. So with that, we've gone over how to create short formative assessments. We've gone over how to create a quiz assignment directly from inside classroom, how to grade the assignments, and how to turn it back to the students. Are there any? I think we may have lost Eric. Are there any questions? Feel free to tap in the chat if you have any questions. Okay, sorry about that. I got booted. So um, I just did include a short URL for the question on how to import into SIS. Um, the answer is on page 17 in that document. And I will review the resources in a second. So um, I'll get to the question in a second. So. 
in the bottom left corner of this pod, there are... Okay, looks like we are dropping connections. Uh, so additional resources are available. Uh, we have PDF downloads of, in the file pod down below. We have more uh, support coming onto our website. Um, we are recording this. We'll post this with yesterday's recording uh, later today. Uh, you can re re reach all the resources at edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. So everything will be on the edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org for more information. So you can click those pieces right there. Uh, you want to bookmark that page? Yes, we want to bookmark that page. Uh, we want to still answer questions. We're going to leave this page up, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask questions. I see people are typing. That website also already has the stuff from yesterday that was posted, so the webinar from yesterday and all of our resources were posted there. The other question on the lessons the district has for us in the Google site, it is being posted this morning, so it will probably be showing up on the coronavirus website, so uh, be sure to keep that out, looking out for that, Mrs. Holland, um, it should be live soon. Other updates and podcasts on that website that we shared in the top right corner. We will be having webinars all next week and in the coming weeks on Google Classroom, Google Meet. We're going to do some stuff with Newzella and Adobe Spark. So we're going to cover all those topics. They will all also be recorded and posted to that website as well. Um, just keep going back to that EdTech training website. It will be a great resource to you. We also have a calendar on that website, so you can click and actually add it to your own Google Calendar, and you will see when we will have trainings right in your own calendar. Again, the Google Lessons, we are assuming that the Google Lessons will be posted to the coronavirus website. So that's the palmbeachschools.org slash coronavirus, the main website that everything is listed at for the coronavirus. Um, that is being led by curriculum. So um, once we see it's live, we can try to grab it and link to it from our website as well. Yes, we are here to support you. Um, we are the EdTech training team. Um, I will say it's not just us, though. Uh, the entire EdTech team is working diligently to support in any way we can. Um, there's a group of us uh, who are doing all of these things to help you guys out. So please share that link with everyone. Tell them to go there and join our webinars. And our goal is to do webinars in nice little tiny chunks so that you can get started and then build from there. Um, when you, I think the question Mrs. Holland you're asking is will we see that the kid is actually live inside of classroom when they're logged on to the machine? The answer is not in classroom, but if you share like a Google Doc and they log into the Google Doc, you'll see their little icon appear in the top right corner like all the other um, Google Docs. So yeah, so that is a possible, but you won't actually see them who's live in the in the classroom. There will be discussions about the, right now they are talking about opening up Google Meet for students as well. So you could also do a live face-to-face -face video conference with them. So those are some of the webinars we're gonna do next week. How to make an interactive calendar for students. Are you kind of talking like the uh, appointment slots? where people can sign up for a spot and then you, you get like a, it on your calendar. Okay. Um, interactive calendar where you post stuff and they see it. Any other ideas, team, what the question is? Well, in yesterday's webinar, we talked about how that when you started your classroom, it would create a calendar and you can see that calendar in their um, settings. 
and you can post assignments to that. So it does have a calendar feature built in as well as um, a Google Drive that you can share out. I see. So, and and you're talking about, um, so essentially uh, we can talk about maybe doing some calendar stuff. The EdTech team is actually going to do office hours. So you can just hop in and, and grab an appointment like us. Uh, you'll be able to grab an appointment from us and then, you know, we can review those types of things with you one-on-one -on -one if needed. Um, so yeah, we can go over something like that though. So look on our website for those office hours and sign up for a slot if a webinar does not necessarily meet your needs on that, okay? Hi, Jan. The URL in the top right corner, edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. We will have the video posted hopefully by tonight. Yesterday's video is already up on the website right underneath the calendar. And we also have a full resource page on Google Classroom under, uh, under the menu bars at the top. But that's where this training is going to go to as well. So you'll see sessions one, two, and uh, one and two on that website. And Selena, what Any I think other you questions? are asking, what I think Selena is asking for is what Google Classroom will automatically create. It will create that calendar, and the assignments will be hyperlinked. So if the assignment is due on on Wednesday the 23rd, I'm just making up a date. Um, it will show up on Wednesday the 23rd with the hyperlink to the assignment. There is also a way for them to subscribe to that uh, yes. or for them to subscribe to that calendar and actually put it in their phones and devices if they want to. I also remember what she was talking about with Learning Village where it was just a, another calendar in your own calendar. You created your own calendar and you would put your assignments on there and then insert a hyperlink to wherever you wanted the lesson to be that day. So it didn't even involve classroom. So I, I do remember now that you're talking about that, the way we used to do it in Learning Village, that you would click on the, that day and then you would click the URL and it would take you to that lesson for the day. So that's definitely something anyone in ed tech can talk to you about. Um, Jonathan Decker is obviously the master at that because he's the one that built all that. Um, but we can also help you in how to how to create your own calendar and then make it share it out with your students. Yes, you can if you want to set it up that way. That way, it just doesn't go through Google Classroom. It's just creating your own calendar that you share out. And like I said, Selena, Jonathan Decker is the one who used to do all of that. So if you email him, um, he probably would be able to teach it to you in in ten minutes because of how often he did that. 